Hi, I'm Tassos, and this is the UX UI video game review. This is the first video of a series in which I will be reviewing the user experience offered by a video game, analyzing its user interface. Now, this task is a very time consuming one, and to be fair, I will have to dig deep into each game, spending hours to make a useful and meaningful analysis. Onwards to the first game, that as you can see is Destiny, that just happens to be one of my favorites. Destiny as a game was always somewhat of a work in progress, and the current version, Rise of Iron, has a little to do with the first release in every aspect. And with the recent rumors about Destiny 2, we may consider that the latest update to this game is the final one, and Destiny is now considered a complete experience. That suits us, considering that the UX UI part of the game is the final, and will not get any changes or tweaks in the future. It is worth noting that Destiny got a design award in 2015. Bungie has a very talented design team, with David Candland at the helm. You can find his Twitter handle and a full-hour presentation from Game Developers Conference in 2016 about the design process in the description. The video is also very informative and useful for all UX UI designers out there, tackling issues like localization, iconography, pop-up menus and much more. Before we start digging into the game, let's learn a bit about cognitive load. In the field of user experience, the cognitive load imposed by a user interface is the amount of mental resources that is required to operate the system. Informally, you can think of mental resources as brain power. More formally, we're talking about slots in working memory. The term cognitive load describes the mental effort required to learn new information. Interacting with the user interface is a much more casual activity than formal education, but cognitive load is still as important. Users must learn how to use a navigation, layout and how to play. And even when the game mechanics are fairly familiar, players must still carry around the information that is relevant to their goal. As we will be analyzing the game, we'll see that Destiny uses design practices that decrease cognitive load. Let's start. First of all, about the menu and the primary means of interaction, behold the free cursor. The cursor used in the game is a well-executed take on a simple mouse pointer that enables you to make speedy changes when interacting with all the different elements on the screen. When the cursor is near an element, it acquires a friction of some kind and its speed lowers. This is important because the cursor has to be fast for you to quickly traverse through the screen, but it has to be precise when you are trying to interact with the elements. When you move the cursor to one direction, the interface moves to the exact opposite, decreasing the distance needed to reach an element and communicates that the UI is composed of separate stacked layers that all interact with your input. On Hover, the details of each element emerge in the form of a pop-up menu that follows you throughout the screen. Further actions are tied to buttons and are prominently shown at the bottom. If you have played the game, you surely noticed that sometimes the pop-up menu shows up in different places or rearranges itself to appear on the other side of the screen. The pop-up takes as input the position of the free cursor on the stage, so the game knows where your previous position was and shows the menu accordingly so as to not hide any part of it outside the screen bounds. This is always occurring when moving vertically and horizontally as you can see. The shoulder button press action to compare equipment is also a very nice feature, it's quick and efficient and every game that is equipment heavy should feature an implementation of it. For example, in Dragon Age Inquisition, a game I enjoyed spending 100 plus hours, going through my equipment when inside the menus was such a painful experience that I rarely opened them to make on-the-fly changes. The compare menu was always some taps away and it obstructed nearly all of my screen with information I usually wouldn't need. The worst part was when I was crafting weapons and armor where I couldn't compare my current equipment with the one I was creating. Destiny does not have a weapon or armor crafting system, but I believe the Bungie design team wouldn't omit this important functionality. Returning to Destiny, to equip armor or weapons, you simply hover to the equipment slot. An equipment grid opens up, you hover on the equipment you want and just tap on a button. This sounds tedious, 
but it is a very easy and simple way to, for example, quickly swap equipment mid-battle, and after using it for some time, you can make the changes you need instantaneously with a continuous move of the cursor. To delete something though, you have to long press a button, to avoid deletion by mistake. Once you delete something, it's gone forever. The direct deletion is a nice touch, avoiding the need to have a separate section to must delete equipment marked as junk as other games have. This system provides a good user experience with its simplicity. You just move and tap, and it makes it easier to your fingers too. Instead of quick pressing the directional button several times, you just perform one simple action. This minimizes greatly the time spent in menus and doesn't tire the player. Finally, grouping the different content with an implementation of tabs, cycling through them using the shoulder buttons, you have a consistent, clean and speedy UI and a stellar presentation while keeping things functional. For example, I don't need to see the quests, items or roster content when inside a game, I just need to get to my equipment, make necessary changes and quickly exit to resume the fight. Also worth noting is that the web interface of your account on the Bungie website is nearly identical to the menu in-game, giving you a consistent user experience even when you are accessing the game from a browser. It's a simple system that handles great complexity really well. In a sense, the UI intrigues you to explore it, much like the game itself. The game succeeds in immersing you in its world, even from the beginning. The splash screen has these concentric rings that are constantly rotating in a motion that resembles an orbit. All environments and planets and social spaces have unique subtle or more prominent visual traits that contribute to this immersion. I fully understood how much work had been put creating the game when I tried to make an environmental time-lapse video that I uploaded some months ago. If you want to watch it, it's in the description, but sadly it's in the mediocre quality of 720p. All this work is probably unnoticed to most players, but it adds variety to the environment subconsciously, so the same destinations look and feel alive. Another thing is that the NPCs that you can interact with have their own place in the game. Inside their menus, a more personal relationship with the player unfolds, elevating the experience. You can see the NPC's face, body, clothing in detail, and they also talk to you, even when there's no quest available. I am still here, keeping watch. You ready to get out there? The Devil Splicer's God Factory is scrapped. Thanks to you. Where have you been, Hunter? Now, what about the core experience, the actual gameplay? It consists of a modular user interface design with an emphasis on a need-to-know basis visibility. When you are in first or third person mode, the UI features the bare essentials. The HUD consists of a radar, a current objective indicator, time status effects that hide after a while, and what I will call the actions panel, featuring abilities and weapon info. At the right side of the screen appear items when you obtain them, and pressing the touchpad button you can see detailed information about various stuff that would flood your screen and are of secondary importance. All information is tucked away nicely until it is needed. Analyzing all the elements separately, you notice that the game employs a smart combination of typography, transparency, shadows and iconography used in the HUD as to not block your view and distract you with information while playing. It also tries to guide you to what's important every step of the way. Health bars are one of the basic elements you expect to see in an FPS game. Your health bar in Destiny is hidden. It may sound absurd, but you don't really need it, not unless you take damage. Then you see a slightly delayed transition of your health bar as it is dropping. When the health bar is approximately at 20%, it turns to red and starts flashing while a beeping sound commences for you to focus into the imminent danger you face. A red vignette with transparency shows up and takes up all of your screen, further denoting the danger and making it more difficult to see clearly, in a way forcing you to find cover and not die guns blazing. While running for cover, when getting hit, there is a red arrow indicator that shows you the direction where your damage comes from, to effectively escape and get to safety. When your shield is restored after a while, the bar makes a transition into 100% and hides. 
and because there are no health packs in the game, except the modes of light, and your health or shield is regenerating, you don't need to regularly check on your health to use an item, you just wait it out. Enemies have no health bars too, unless you have the crosshair on them. You can see the bars only when the target is in your sights, from hip or scoped. This is a no-brainer. Imagine the visual clutter if only enemies had their health bars shown at all times. This is an example of bringing you crucial information only when it's needed. And it's smart because the human brain can process information faster when perceiving substantial differences between two states instead of a gradual change. Couple it with sound cues when a major event is happening and your focus is heightened to where it matters the most. What instantly got my attention when I started playing the game was how the weapon switching system was implemented. In the actions panel, the rectangular area to the bottom left, resides the weapon stack. It consists of three rows, with the first row being the currently equipped weapon and the other two for your reserves. You see all weapons at all times and this gives you an overview of your equipment, eliminating any doubts you may have for what is equipped. Also, by seeing the icons of each type of a weapon and its damage types, you know exactly what is on you. If you can remember, for example, if you equip that solar fusion rifle or the arc sniper rifle, a glimpse through the weapon stack would suffice. Each weapon has a colored horizontal border-like line to the right that denotes its type and what kind of ammo it uses. The ammo drops are colored too and correspond to each weapon type. When a weapon is active, the current clip has a larger font size than the total ammunition one. When nearing the end of the clip, the text color becomes red, and when it's empty, it starts blinking. Effective coloring augments the user experience in Destiny, and we will analyze it further below in a bit. Another thing is how information is being communicated to the player during gameplay through volatile information. When inflicting damage, you can see small sized text on top of the enemy appearing for a few seconds before it vanishes with an opacity transition. The numbers flow like a live stream feed. Essentially, it is information you need to see only for a second in the heat of a battle. This includes the status effects to the left and a scrolling list to the right, which is used for the acquisition of items. Another example of volatile information is when you pick up ammunition. The corresponding weapon row glows and the number of ammunition gained is shown for a while. And this partners with effective coloring. The primary text color is white. It's readable and easy for the eye, using alpha overlays and shadows. Base damage inflicted to an enemy is white. Yellow color in the game denotes importance. The light level indicator in the menu is yellow. The super ability bar when charged or ready to cast is also yellow, along with a message with a yellow icon and text. Critical damage, such as headshots to enemies, is yellow, and also is shown for a bit more time than the normal damage. And of course, the health bars of bosses are yellow. Red color is for negative actions. When in a dangerous situation, for example low health, the red color comes up. When you delete an item, the bar fills with red color. The color of the ammo packs, white, green and purple, have a tint that stands out from the rest of the environment along with a glow, so you can spot them easily when in the heat of battle and grab them. And of course the drops follow this distinct coloring scheme, being larger than the ammo. These are all subtle things picked up by your subconscious when you're busy shooting. They provide you with the right information at the right time when you really need it without polluting the interface with text or buttons. The game in totality avoids visual clutter such as redundant text, irrelevant imagery and meaningless typography flourishes that slow you down. As we are nearing the end of the review, Destiny does one other thing spectacularly well. It solves the problem of resource-hungry network performance, weaving it as a part of the user experience. I'm talking about the director. After playing for a year straight, I'm still in awe when seeing my spaceship orbiting and awaiting orders. 
According to Foschke on Reddit, the true purpose of going back to the director, aka orbiting, is a break period for network communications. While in orbit, you are maintaining a passive connection to the server, allowing the server to utilize its resources to other active connections. This is why when something goes wrong while playing the game, you are most likely kicked into orbit. When you are anywhere else in the game, including the tower, you are in an instance of the area, meaning the server has an active connection from you and a select few other players, and managing the connections in such a way that when one player moves, you see that player move on your screen. When you move, other players see you move on their screens. That's an active connection. So you can understand how resource hungry this whole operation is. What would happen if Orbit was replaced with just the tower? Well, Bungie would have to be maintaining many, many more active connections, increasing server load, which is very, very, very bad for lag. There is a link in the description if you want to read more. Also, in nearly every action that involves the game to communicate with the server, there is a 3 to 5 seconds delay. For example, when choosing a mission, the game informs you that it will start loading it in 3 seconds. During that time window, you can cancel the action if you initiate it by mistake. 3 seconds are enough to avoid overloading the server with accidental requests and it is a short interval so it doesn't annoy you. In a nutshell, we can conclude that Bungie did a great job designing the interface and weaved a fantastic user experience. While playing the game, you don't notice all these little details separately and that's what a good UI is. It's there, you interact with it, but you don't perceive its presence the way you do with a typical user interface. At this point, the analysis comes to a close. By now, you should have understood that the game is an example of good design practices and deserve that award, and it should have many more. If you came this far and enjoyed it, please like the video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment with the next game you want me to analyze. Preferably point me to a bad game you consider for its UX to talk about. Signing off, goodbye guardians.